Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at a problem that will be very similar to the homework. Remember there's two things that we want to get from this. One, we want to get to learn the accounting concepts and two, we want to get to learn the Excel worksheets. So 95% of what you're going to learn in Excel and actually use on a day-to-day -day basis will be learned in the accounting classes such as just data input, maneuvering the cell, formatting the cell. Then when you take an Excel class what you really want to pick up are some tips and tricks like some specialized formulas and some formatting of the worksheets that can help to present them. So keep those two things in mind as we go and keeping those in mind we can take a look at what we have in the worksheet. We first have the accounting equation up here that will also be represented by taking the numbers from the trial balance here. You do not have to post anything up here just take a look at those as we go through the problem. We're gonna have our trial balance down here. We got the beginning balance over here. Note that the trial balance will be in order. Assets are gonna be on top. They have a green indicated there by they're indicated to be assets by the fact that they're green zeros here liabilities will have the orange and then equity and then the income statement which is part of owner's equity will have blue and a slightly different blue for the income statement the blue area here represents the fact that we're differentiating between the balance sheet above and the income statement accounts below so keep that in mind as you go keep a trial balance in front of you every time you're doing anything in accounting and that includes doing uh, multiple choice questions because the balance sheet will tell you whether something is an asset account, a liability account, equity, or part of the income statement just by where it is formatted in the chart of accounts. So we are going to post these transactions to the journal entry section here and then we're going to post these journal entries to the entries section of the trial balance and that will take the beginning balance plus our entries to the ending balance so we can get a snapshot of what happens. Then we'll post the transaction's effect to the uh, accounting equation over here. So let's take a look at the first transaction, perform work on account and invoice the client. So the first question I always ask, is cash affected? In this case, no, it's not affected because uh, we did work on account. Therefore, we got something. We didn't get cash though. So we got an IOU. And notice we didn't get anything tangible at this time, but we sent out the invoice and once we do the work, we're going to assume that uh, people owe us money. So notice accounts to people is similar to cash in that it's an asset. Assets have debit balances. People owe us more money. The receivable went up. Therefore, we're going to do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case will be a debit. So I'm going to right click on F6, copy it. I'm going to put our cursor in C5 right click I'm gonna paste it one two three just the values that'll keep the blue section that the amount will be for ten thousand so once again I'm not gonna format it any special way I'm gonna hit enter it'll format for us then in the credit section I'm gonna put in a negative ten thousand and when we hit enter it'll have the brackets in there for us that's due to the formatting of the cells then there's only a question as to what should that ten thousand account be and if people owe us money and they're going to pay us because we did work. So that's going to be the revenue account. So the revenue account down here below the blue line is an income statement account. It's going to go up. Now note that revenue accounts only go up because revenue can only go up. If we invoice someone, either we get paid or we don't, it can be zero or go up. Note that net income can go down because net income is revenue minus expenses. So we already know that we're going to credit it. Now the question is, does that make sense? Let's think it through. Revenue has a credit balance it's a credit balance account it only goes up how do we make things go up we do the same thing to it as what they are if this is a credit it needs to be credited to go up therefore that makes sense because we're going to increase it with a credit so i'm going to copy that I'm going to paste it one two three uh, you could just type these in here if you would like but we do want to use formulas when we post them over here because it can really help you to uh, analyze if something gets out of balance so then we're going to post these to the entries column. So I'm in F6 and or H6 and we're going to say this equals and then I'm going to point to the accounts receivable. So there's accounts receivable. Here's accounts receivable. It says D5. It's zero. It's going to go up in the debit direction to 10,000. Puts us out of balance here, out of balance up here. No effect on net income as of yet. Then we're going to go to the uh, receivables here. I mean the revenue here in H12 equals... We're going to point to the 10,000 in E6. That's going to increase here. That's going to put us back in balance there. It's going to bring net income up. So there we have it back to green zeros. We have a, a debit and a credit. Note that the debits and credits in this column are not represented over here as having two columns. If we did do so, 
that would mean that this worksheet would be two columns here, two columns here, two columns here, six columns long. So there are times when uh, it can be practical to represent credits uh, in a different way, meaning credits, I mean, debits being positive and credits being negative numbers to save space in some ways. So uh, keep that in mind as we go through. This is in balance because the debit, uh, what is owned, um, is 10000 and the credit is 10000 and that's part of total equity over here. So assets equal total equity at this time. And this amount here means that we have income. So even though it's a credit represented by Excel with a negative number, we see it as a, a credit, not a negative number. It's not a loss. It's a positive credit going in the credit direction. So that's going to be the confusing thing when we convert from a numerical plus and minus function to debits and credits over here. Uh, in this case, the revenue is beating the expenses. Therefore, we have income of 10000 Let's take a look at the accounting equation there. Again, we could delete this and just say, okay, what happened? It's at zero, and then assets go up to 10000 That makes sense. So because uh, this is an asset, accounts receivable, and it increased. There's nothing that happened to the uh, liability account, so we're just going to say none. If this increased and this is on the other side, then this must increase. We could double check that though. We can delete this, say it's at zero, and then undo it. It's at 10. Notice it's at 10 as a positive, which is of course included here. And that's because the accounting equation doesn't represent debits and credits. The trial balance does. So in terms of the accounting equation, we know we're in balance because assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. In terms of the trial balance, we know that the debits equal the credits. So there is that. Let's take a look at the next one. We receive cash on account for work performed in the past. So first question I always ask, is cash affected? It is affected. We got money. And we know that cash has a debit balance, just like receivables, represented by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. And it went up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case is a debit. So I'm going to right-click, copy the cash. I'm going to put that on top, right next to the B, because debits go on top, pasting it 1, 2, 3. Then we're going to put in here the 10000 That 10000 is, of course, the money that we got for the, what we billed last time. And then we're going to credit something, a negative 10 thousand that negative going to be bracketed representing credits to us and the question is what do we what do we credit and you might be thinking well revenue because revenue went up again and that would increase revenue again but we already recognized the revenue we recognized it last time when we earned it under the revenue recognition principle what is happening now is people owed us money and now it's going down so this ten thousand that is owed from the bill that we sent out last time should now go down to zero once we receive the money Therefore, we need to make that go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So we already knew that because we debited cash. So now we're going to credit the receivable, making it go down. So I'm going to right-click on receivable, copy it, right-click on C9, and paste 1, 2, 3. Then we can post this out. So I'm going to put my cursor in H5 and say equals, and we're going to point to that 10,000 in the cash. I'm going to go from 0 up to 10,000 like so, and we're out of balance now and uh, no effect on net income from that transaction. We're gonna then go to the accounts receivable. Something's in it, so we're gonna have to double click on it. I can see what's in there. It's the 10,000 there. I'm gonna go to the end of it after that, five, so that's in D5 plus. I wanna add to it what's in cell E9. Now this is a negative number that we're adding to it here. You're never gonna have to put a negative number in this column because the credits are represented as uh, negative numbers here. So what's gonna happen that's a positive number or a debit. That's a negative number or a credit. That's going to make this go down. It's going to put us back in balance here. And there we have it. Notice there's no effect on net income, even though we got cash, because we recognized the revenue when we earned it last time. So now let's see what happens to the accounting equation. If I delete this, we could say, okay, we got 10, 0, and 10. Undo, 10, 0, and 10. Nothing happened. Why? Because uh, cash went up, and it's an asset, but the receivable went down and it's also an asset so assets went up and down we got a better asset we got cash which we'd rather have than receivable this is why the accounting equation is not as efficient really it doesn't tell us as much as the trial balance in terms of debits and credits so we really do need the trial balance we really do need debits and credits uh, it's worth learning that i know once we learn the accounting equation we get the feeling that we can do everything with the accounting equation and we don't need debits and credits but uh, you do this will tell you a lot more 
than uh, the accounting equation. For example, I can see net income right now 